noise? You're right. bother you? <laughs> You're okay. okay. Um, I want to recognize first uh, the co-authors, uh, Dr. Bayoli and Dr. Patrick Hunt from our research center in Florida, South Carolina. And I'm going to talk about uh, a process that we have been working for a few years uh, to record phosphorus from particularly uh, solid uh, manure. And uh, in, as an overview, well, I will follow the why the phosphorus recovery first and what did we do and what we have learned in some future plans uh, that we have with this uh, technology that we have uh, developed in Florence. So why phosphorus recovery? Well, there are several environmental issues related to phosphorus that um, and some of them, uh, some of them are central to our idea of how to recover phosphorus. And one of them is the nitrogen-phosphorus ratio in animal waste and uh, versus the tissue in, in crop plants. And uh, also is related directly to the accumulation of manure of phosphorus because of that imbalance of the phosphorus-nitrogen uh, ratio. And, uh, a third thing is their uh, forecast of the limited mineral, mineral phosphate reserves, and particularly the, the high quality phosphate reserves are the ones that probably are the ones that we are going to deplete first in the next 50, 100 years. There are different forecasts for that. So, so those uh, uh, three things uh, really moved us to, in order to think about if we can correct the nitrogen phosphorus ratio in manure and third center certain viable uh, product. And uh, going back to the nitrogen phosphorus ratio, well, uh, the manure, uh, you can find manure that is nitrogen phosphorus ratio two to one, you, that's quite usual, and but the plants are completely unba unbalanced or the manure is unbalanced with respect with what is used by the plant. So, uh, the, pl the plant uses nitrogen, but doesn't use all the phosphorus that comes with the, the application of manure. Therefore, we have a phosphorus, first a phosphorus surplus accumulates in the soil, but then we have, of course, problems with uh, runoff and leaching, and that's what is creating problems with uh, contamination of, uh, of uh, water resources. Uh, the other thing is that uh, this is uh, relatively old already, but I think it still is showing that there is a large amount of phosphorus that is recoverable and is produced uh, as manure phosphorus. And if we look just uh, at uh, poultry in swine, more than 50% of that phosphorus is recoverable phosphorus. And recoverable phosphorus is a mass of nutrient per ton of uh, manure remaining after nutrient losses during manure collection, transfer, storage, and, and treatment. So uh, a large uh, amount of phosphorus is, 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 is produced with manure, and about 25% uh, of, of that phosphorus is, is, has, has the potential of uh, replace the commercial uh, phosphate uh, fertilizers. So. The idea of, uh, well, if we can recover uh, a fraction of that, particularly in areas where we have too much and move it somewhere else in the country where it's needed, more than uh, areas where it's in excess and producing problems with pollution, then probably that, that's a pretty good idea. Well, we developed, we developed this, uh, this process that is called the, the quick wash process. Actually, it was someone from NRCS who put that name and visited with us and we explained the process. And it, it was the, um, uh, what's his name, uh, the, light, uh, the late agronomist, national agronomist, um, Chuck, uh, Landry. Chuck Landry. Chuck Landry. When we explained, he said, oh, this, this is really quick when, when you, when you do this, and actually we have, the, the fundamental idea is we have manure solids, could be extremely dry, like poultry litter, and we're going to show you examples of that of the poultry litter, or could be a, a thick slurry that uh, we mix with an acidic solution, and what we obtain is a selective phosphorus extraction. 
uh, we, uh, we can extract up to 80% or 90% of the phosphorus from, from the solids of the manure and obtain a wash residue that is still contains substantial amount of nitrogen and basically all, almost all the carbon. So we can reduce, we can increase the nitrogen phosphorus ratio and make it uh, this uh, wash residue use it for, for land application in a more safely and, and environmentally manner. Uh, with the liquid uh, coming out of that extraction, it is possible to precipitate the phosphorus using uh, some alkaline uh, materials like uh, calcium hydroxide, we, you, we use that. Uh, magnesium also uh, can, can work uh, really well. And then we do a precipitation enhancement, which is a third simple step that we add, we add a uh, flocculant in order to clump the, the material and be able to recover the phosphorus easily through some filtration or soil liquid separation device. And we, we have a liquid that can be recir recirculated into um, the, treatment, the treatment system. And, and, and this, we call it the process because we think that this process can be adapted to different systems. Uh, we have a U.S. patent uh, pending on this process and it has been licensed to renew nutrients to the small business in, in Pinehurst, uh, North Carolina, and they're trying to commercialize um, this, this process. And uh, just to show you uh, the process in more than an engineering uh, diagram, uh, animal waste having phosphorus comes into uh, like a, a con container or a tank is mixed with a certain amount of acid to a certain pH and uh, then decanted and the washed soil residue comes out low in phosphorus and still containing plenty of nitrogen. Uh, the decanted liquid then goes to a second step, mixed with lime and a flocculant, and then later on uh, the water, the effluent comes out, could be land applied safely because it's, it's, it's low in nitrogen and it's low in, uh, very low in phosphorus, or can be recirculated and reused in the, into the system, which is probably a lot, uh, a lot more effective use of water in a, in a treatment system like this. Uh, we built a, a small uh, pilot treatment unit where we tested what we obtained in the, in the lab and basically this is the two tanks and the mixers and, and we mix the, uh, in this case we use poultry liters and, and uh, we look at the poultry liter because it contains a lot of phosphorus. So the idea that we can remove a lot of phosphorus from poultry liter, that's what, but, but we tested that also with, uh, with the manure slurry and it works really well, probably even more efficiently than with, uh, with poultry liter. But in the first step, as I said, acidification. And the acidification is not extreme acidification. Between pH three and five, you can remove up to 80, 90 percent of the of the phosphorus, and that phosphorus that come out in the in liquid form is about 50 percent organic and about 50 percent inorganic. And uh, you can use different mineral or organic acids. We, we tried several of them, and all of them work. The, the the big difference here would be the cost of that uh, that acid uh, that you are using and and uh, the acidification can be controlled uh, by pH control, it's really easy and it's possible to automate the process. Uh, for precipitation, the liquid uh, when it's separated from the washed solids is uh, treated and you can treat it up to a pH 10 and basically with hydrated lime uh, you can remove uh, about 80% uh, of the phosphorus and uh, record it. And then we use uh, an a, a ionic polymer in order to, to make it a, a thick sludge, easy to separate and filtrate. Uh, this is an example of uh, the, 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 product that, the products that we, we obtain, wash it solid, solid residue, low phosphorus product, uh, in this case, we dry the, the poultry liter, so it looks really, really nice product. 
but it also could be left as a slurry in, in land apply because it, it contains, I will show you the, the data on nitrogen on, the, on this product. And this is the recovered phosphorus after we, we dry it out and concentrate it. In, uh, and also we, we crushed in order to, to use it uh, as a fertilizer. Uh, just to show you some of, uh, I think I need to st stand here. Just to, to show you that if we just use water to uh, remove phosphorus, we only can remove about 20% of the, of the it, it can be extracted. Uh, with, with, as, with acid, a pH 4.5, we also remove the same amount of, of nitrogen. I mean, I, I, I think I said not uh, phosphorus, but you remove uh, about 20% of the of the um, nitrogen. So um, when uh, we look at the what happens with the phosphorus, only with water, with a pH 8.1, when we mix uh, botrytis with water, we remove all, only 20% of phosphorus, but we can remove about 80% just with the acid. So what we have is that the wash liter with the, with the treatment, uh, you can reach a, a, a nitrogen phosphorus ratio of 5.8 to 1, which already is uh, that residue you can, you can line up by it, uh, safely. And on the other hand, we obtain uh, a phosphorus uh, uh, product out of the process. This is what happens in the steps two and three when we, when we add lime to the liquid. In this case, uh, we mix uh, one part of a uh, poultry liter with 25 uh, parts of water, which is a lot of water. But still, we, you, you can see that there is, in the liquid extract, 600 parts per million of uh, phosphorus. When we start to add lime, it decreases almost to uh, probably here around five, uh, to 10 parts per million of phosphorus left in the supernatant, and it's optimum at around uh, pH 10, where we get 75% uh, uh, <coughs> of the total phosphorus removed with respect of the initial content on the, on the poultry liter. So that, this is just to show you the, the example of the phosphorus removal with lime addition to a liquid, you like cloudy, color there is the formation of the, of the phosphate uh, clumps in. and then uh, the phosphorus enhancement with, with flocculation and that, that's what is really easy to, to filtrate and, and, and separate into a final uh, phosphorus product. When we look at what is the concentration on a dry weight basis, uh, the recovered broiler liter con contains 5.9% of phosphorus versus the, the original two. And the same is, is with the P205. It's just a conversion from total phosphorus to P205. So we can concentrate uh, four, uh, uh, three to four times the, uh, the phosphorus in the final product. Uh, the concentration of phosphorus, 5.9, a lot of calcium because we have calcium hydroxide to precipitate. There is still a little bit of carbon, a little bit of nitrogen magnesium and potassium, but very little sodium. And we also have the data on the heavy metals, and, and the heavy metals are, are, um, are low. And um, the recovered material we also tested uh, for um, fertilizer, um, plant available uh, test uh, of the citrate soluble, and it was more than 90% uh, plant available phosphorus in the material. So uh, we tested uh, several uh, applications. We, we tried a broiler and turkey leader. We worked for fine. We are now uh, completing some uh, tests with the laying hen manure. And we tested with swine manure. It works really well. But, uh, and also, what, one thing that we did was to test with municipal solids. We can remove about 90% of the phosphorus from municipal um, biosolids. Um, the use of the recovered phosphorus as a fertilizer is also important. We obtain the product that if it doesn't, it's not very soluble and doesn't, it's not used by a plant, then, then it's not, not very good. So 
we did a greenhouse study and we put uh, several phosphorus sources, one that recovered phosphorus, the raw broiler liter, the triple superphosphate, and unfertilized control. And we found a soil with very low content of plant amino phosphorus, so we could prove that there is, uh, there is plant response to the application of that particular source of the recovered phosphorus. So uh, the results, I'm not going to show you graphs and complicated graph, but the results, uh, there was significant dry matter production for all phosphorus sources with respect to the unfertilized control. Difference in dry matter production were not significant, except when we had a very high concentration of triple superphosphate that we were, were equivalent to like 170 uh, pounds per, per acre or so. Was, uh, only then uh, triple superphosphate was superior to, to the recovered phosphorus or the other uh, sources. The recovered uh, phosphorus then uh, we concluded is suited for its use as a source of uh, phosphorus fertilizer. Um, there are, in order to, to take this to full scale and use it, uh, there are challenges and opportunities particularly for the, this company that, that uh, is licensing this, this process. And uh, one of the things is the increase, increasing price of fertilizer. Right? You, you think when the phosphorus uh, price goes up, this could be something real. Well, uh, the farmers also are selling their, their poultry litter at a high price, and they have to do it to go and compete, and they have to give a, a tipping fee to, in order to get their, uh, their, their poultry litter into, into, into treating into a centralized facility. They, they, they are competing with that. Uh, the policies of manure management uh, are different in different states, so there are incentives to adopt new technologies in certain states, some others that, that those opportunities don't exist. Uh, and uh, also the treatment cost, the, the manure type, uh, the poultry leader is one of the extremes, it probably uses a, lot, uh, a little bit more acid than a, a, a swine slurry. Uh, the, what is the goal? How much percent phosphorus you, uh, is uh, you're going to remove? What is the target? Uh, and, uh, and also the equipment, depending on the type of acid, you, you may need, uh, you may need some, some more spe specialized equipment. But all those are things that are uh, challenges, but also there are opportunities. And the opportunities is the recovery of phosphorus from manure. And that can help to reduce the manure uh, phosphor application to soils that are already high in certain, center, certain areas of the country. And the aspect of phosphorus recovery and reuse is important for the global cycling of, cycling of phosphorus. And we were talking about that there are forecasts of, that we are going to deplete the reserves of phosphorus of uh, uh, high quality, but to, to produce high quality fertilizers. So, uh, Recycling is probably something good, and there are some studies from this company having centralized treatment facilities, uh, and they have been proposed to recover phosphorus in areas with high density of animal production. And well, the thing that they are targeting uh, the potential economic benefits uh, from water quality credit programs, and that that probably could be an incentive because. Uh, Right now, we are selling that phosphorus at the, at the current price of uh, phosphorus products. We are not going to, to make a, a lot of money and, and, and be uh, economic, but uh, there is potential from water quality credit programs in certain areas to target and use this technology. So, I think with that, I'm done, I think. That's my, oh, uh, publications. Yeah, we have uh, several publications that you can look at the process in, in detail. And, um, and uh, I, I'm open to, for questions. Okay, questions. Back here. Prosper, what was the flow rate through the system? How long did it take? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we, we were talking about it, it was quick. Uh, for example, less than 50 <coughs> minutes to, to mix with the acid. And, and then. Uh, the, the, when, when the liquid is separated, uh, it separates pretty quick because uh, 
UN uh, or that indicated the portal leader is quite safe, it's easy to separate. So the liquid, uh, uh, when it's precipitated with the lime, is almost instantaneous. So that's why when I explained that uh, to Chuck Lambert um, from NRCS, he said, well, we we just you have to call this the quick water. Because, uh, this, is, this is the quick process, and that, that's what we were looking at. Well, is there more applications likely of uh, municipal solids, municipal systems than agriculture, or is agriculture a French art? Well, it was the time entirely was was uh, agriculture, and go ahead, answer the question. And the primary uh, target was agriculture, and, and then uh, the company contacted also the municipalities and. And he's there working yeah. with these yeah. paddies now, and I run like tests like by the solids, <laughs> injecting into the biosolid stream for solid liquid separation, and we could uh, we could uh, separate and uh, I mean core about eighty five percent of phosphorus in the biosolids, and those were uh, uh, municipalities that were targeted by. By EPA in order to reduce their phosphorus uh, on that application for having problems with sending biosolids to the One last question. How, how do you separate the uh, liquid back out of your swine slurry? From, from the swine slurry, uh, once I mix it with the, with the acid, yeah, it, it goes to a solid liquid uh, separator. But uh, probably will, uh, you will need some polyacrylamide in order to make it more efficient and separate completely, but also uh, decantation. 